prvnou, já jsem proto jako ne, guru Sarvou Poplory, to proto já proto jako to bude mý váhom smí, bude mý váhom smí, hra jenom padne dvou, já si tam šaktím, že tato putra pará, že jenče já jsem šupan gole, potom mohám to go in the jubi. Ačára matá si padnou páden čas, tam je dokonče šišem ten tu, tak on vártu kármu, já no smut guru, jsem tato má na to smí, Šruti jsme ty prána na malým korunálím, na mají hlavat pádem, šankarom, 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 šankaráčářím, kýšom, bádrájenom, sůtra, vhaši, proto vondy, vhavantou, konah, konaha, kýšvaro, guru, ráty mě tý můrty, hejde, vhadný, vyumovat, vyáp, tedy, hajde, tak šená můrty, jenom hajde, sahná, vhatu, sahná, vhatu, sahvíriam, karová, vhejte, je časvě návodí, tenc to má být duša, vhejí, šanty, 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 šan Vrom hrany vyhádí kurohy vydáhu, že prohynouty za svým tomu hledy má propadky prokáše mou k šurvejí šerany mohem propadití. Šanty, šanty, šanty. Amná jante, ka som si dvom ádi matyán tovar, že tam ánanda hrnamá purnamá pme džyoty rupás mehe. Šanty, šanty, šanty. Okay. So starting late, I'll try to finish by seven, but as usual it may go. Five ten minutes here and there. Okay, so we looked at the earlier sutra in the <coughs> Pratardana Dikaranam. So Pratardana is being taught by Indra as Prano Asmi Pradyatma. And the Siddhanti said that your Upasana cannot be Jiva Upasana, Prano Upasana, or Indra Upasana to the Puro Pakshi. Because of the very fact that the I, Aham, that Asmi that he is saying, Prano Asmi, that I is Pratyagatma. It is Brahma. Because when you go further, when you go further, you will see that the Atma Upadesha, Vaktu Atma Upadesha, that is Pratyagatma. Because Yavad Yasmin Sharire Prano Vasati Tavad Ayuhu Sayesha Prana Eva Pradnyatma Anandaha Ajaraha Amrutaha It is in Samanadi Karanam with Pradnyatma and if you misinterpret Pradnyatma Ananda Ajaraha and Amrutaha cannot be misinterpreted. You cannot take any other meaning than Brahma. Therefore, tasmat pranatmaka brahma upadesha evayam na devata vishesha upadesha iti siddham. Now further, katham tari vaktu atma upadesha as the puro pakshi. Then how does this atma upadesha aham asmi, why would he say this prana aham asmi? That kind of an atma upadesha does not seem to be in place. How does it fit the context? This is the question asked by the Puro Pakshi. As an answer to this, Shastra Drishtyatu Upadesho Vamadevavat Shastra Drishtyatu Upadesho Vamadevavat Sutrakara gives an answer to this. How is this Atma Upadesha with Aham Bhava, how is it possible that Prana, I am Prana, I am Pradnyatma, how can Indra say so? So you have to look at from the Shastra Drishti. When Jnanotpatti takes place, then Shastra Drishti is there and Shastra reveals what is the Swarupa of Atma. Therefore that Atma Drishti, Atma Upadesha, Atma Tvena Upadesha. So Vaktuhu Indrasya Pranaha Atma Iti Atma Tvena. By prana aham, so aham is atma there. So prana aham iti atma tvena upadesha ha. Katham sambhavati, he says shastra drishtya, sutra kara says, you have to have the shastra drishti the way Indra had it, then you will understand. So Indra's aham is not the aham that you yourself have with the reflexive, that aham is that reflexive, it is not reflexive for Indra when he is teaching that aham goes all the way inside through the koshas, through the shariras, through the three shariras, through the pancha koshas. And that aham is indivisible. It is not an individual aham. That aham is 
samashti aham if ishwara if ishwara was to were to say aham that aham is the indra aham here therefore shastra drushtya through the shastra drushti to upadeshah what upadesha atma upadesha atmatvena nirdeshah saying that i am this pranah what is the example there oh you see elsewhere in the upanishad vamadevavat like vamadevas shastra drushti indra also had shastra drushti so here indrasya vaktu vakta is indra so indrasya vaktu maameva vijanihi no me that is also there further maameva vijanihi no all this is as me iti upadesha shastra drushtya shastra drushtya jnatavya it should be known from the perspective of the shastra as to what is the real teaching what is the core of the teaching what is the tatparya vishay of the entire upanishad if you had that through shadling analysis you would have landed on this very meaning says the siddhanta to the purva pakshi ahameva param brahma iti where he says that maameva vijanihi in this mantra maameva vijani what is he really saying that sharira sahita aham is not maam in the second case so sharira sahita aham is not maam he is saying that aham without the sharira without the upadhi sambandha that aham maam vijanihi so no it not as an object but as the very subject that is the idea there as the sakshi the very content of i in each and every prani that aham is what aham eva maam eva maam and aham are in samanadikarana so what is that aham indra's aham is aham eva param brahma that param brahma which you also are pratardana is also param brahma and when we say pratardana is also that also is only as long as upadhi is there when he needs buddhi for vichara once the buddhi resolves in that brahmakara vritti and he knows that aham his own aham swayam that aham is in samanadikaran with brahma then this also drops off there is no also anymore there is no individuality anymore there is no other so kena kampashe ityadi mantras are pramana for that brahma veda brahma yo bhavati therefore aham eva param brahma iti vijanihi that's the idea there when you know me as brahma then you will know yourself as brahma that aham if you know that indra with a name tag you know then there is division subject object division you drop that nama roopa all the upadikrta bhedas and then that aham in me is the same as aham in you that is the teaching and therefore brahma iti shastra drushtya aham eva param brahma iti shastra drushtya pashyan evam uktavan ityartha indra had this shastra drushti his vision was that and through that vision he gave this teaching uktavan upadesha upadesha muktavan atar drushtanta what is the example given vamadeva vat like vamadeva yatha vamadeva shastra drushtya in rigveda we hear this mantra yatha vamadeva shastra drushtya what did he say aham aham manurabhuvam suryascha uh, aham manurabhavam suryascha i am myself manu and who is manu the manasaputra of chaturmukha brahma who created this entire prapancha as his very job assigned by brahma and then teach dharma so he established dharma in this prapancha that's why you are manu smriti so that manu i am or any manu you take manu is the is the forefather of all ancestor of all manushyas that manu aham aham asmi abhavam i i became as do there is no becoming it is abhavam i was abhavam is also you know i i was same manu that i am today so after 
several kalpas also who i exist that is the same who is the chaitanya which ticks as aham which ticked as aham in manu also and then what about surya surya is has been there forever some kind of surya that we see has been there forever as long as these lokas are there surya nourishes these lokas therefore is called as poshan also that poshan surya i am so maybe manu i was manu now i am surya so it is not became you can say i was so abham i was manu and i am surya ityah tadvat so it was not literal he is not going to become literally surya or he wasn't literally manu the antakarana bheda upadi bhedas were there but even with the upadi bhedas even with the kala bheda kala parichheda vastu parichheda and desha parichheda surya is in a different desha manu was in a different desha in a different kala also surya may be in this ke- in this kala but if i don't see him he is not pratyaksha to me during night with that kala bheda also kala parichheda and vastu parichheda because upadi bheda is vastu bheda even so with all these three divisions also i am same manu and same surya identified with that upadi so param brahma vamadeva's understanding was shastra drushti through shastra drushti he had that vision of the shastras the tatpare vishaya was revealed to him in such a manner that he has sakshatkara and since he had sakshatkara he couldn't see any bheda there was no dvaita for him only advaita so sarvatma bhava is there this sarvatma bhava aham eva manuh aham eva surya ha similarly prana ha aham asmi prajnatma this is the indra's expression of that sarvatma bhava and similarly this is the teaching tadvat iti ataha brahma param eva etad vakyam iti siddham therefore para brahma param eva this vakya is also having tatpare as para brahma brahma para is committed to reveal brahma not that aham which is divided but aham which is pratyagatma and that pratyagatma is undivided even with the upadi it is undivided that pratyagatma is para brahma and that para brahma para para is the tatpare vishaya it is committed to reveal that it is it is focused constructed in such a manner the vivaksha of indra is in such a manner to reveal that aikya of pratardana also with brahma if not with jnana then let him do this upasana being upasana kanda we will you know uh, kind of dilute it a little and we will say that although this is the teaching not very easy to see ekagrata has to be there chitta shuddhi has to be there so upasana is being taught you so however the upasana is you do that upasana if the upasana is on udgita you do the upasana on udgita if prana has to be seen as udgita you do that if indra has to be seen as prana you do that while doing so who is that prana who is that akasha what is meant by akasha you keep the buddhi as para brahma buddhi not as limited prana not as indra devata not as an individual divided jiva but even if it it is seen as glorification keep the para brahma buddhi there that will help says the advaita vedanta that is the perspective of this upasana kanda also slowly you take away all divisions in upasana also you take away divisions there may be nama and rupa bheda in the upasana but while doing the upasana you can keep this subtle buddhi as to let there be at the basis of all upasana let there be para brahma buddhi this is how the sutras are carrying the sadaka who is now an upasaka to jnana kanda so that he becomes a jignasu and finally he gets the tatva 
and when he gets his tattva all of these upasanas also start making sense with jnana embedded in them so in fact in that embedding of jnana also what in the teaching in the upasana also yeah in the upasana also when jnana is seen to be embedded further when it starts slowly revealing itself the parabrahma tattva as aham then the jnana in shravana during shravana whatever jnana was given even in upasana kanda they will all start looking like aikya vakyas which is the real tatparya or real commitment of the shruti and that is seen as you know indra is that is imbibed in the indra's teaching or any other teaching of upasana also where each of the devatas or the uh, whether it is devata vishesha or generally some devata which is mentioned there then all that is brahma para really so you have to carry it in such a manner says the advaitin because in the end you will see how it all makes sense this analysis is because that tatparya vishaya is very clear to the siddhanti he can see how each and every upasana is also tuned towards it and that is the uh, that is the vada that is the samvada here now the puro pakshi says okay this much is say agreeable nanu evam api even then <coughs> na brahma param idam api tu anya param ityasham kya he says okay you are saying that this upadesha is possible vamadeva vat but even if there are similarities in vamadeva's understanding and indra's understanding similarities it may not be same and just because when i look at an example and compare it looks similar to me it may not even be similar so it is not same it may be similar then he says it may not be similar also because just because it appears to be so what indra has in his mind may be different because i can infer you are inferring so will i infer says the puro pakshi nanu evam api even if i agree that there are examples available like this and shastra drishti is there shastra drishti itself is under question now you have a different shastra drishti i have a different shastra drishti so how do you say that brahma param idam vakyam etad vakyam brahma param how do you say that it may not be brahma para it may be anya para meaning it may be teaching multiple upasanas as to pranah aham asmi and then pragnyatma and pratyagatma also if you are taking we will say it is jiva individualized we will not say pratyagatma is brahma and that is the shastra drishti if i say that is the shastra drishti then what will happen this statement can mean multiple things and then we are back to reinterpreting it as what initially he opened up by saying what uh, in the phala the vritti had mentioned that patra puro pakshe prana indra devata jivanam anyatama upasthi one of them anyatama one of prana indra devata or jiva and puro pakshi had explained as he has no issues taking any one of these as upasya but not brahma the fourth was added by the siddhanti so prana indra devata or jiva now the siddhanti says if at all you say anya param then all are, i'll ask you what exactly is it how will you say it is either prana or indra devata or jiva you cannot make that conclusion because all three can be anya puro pakshi says yes all three can be anya you take one among them siddhanti says no you cannot take one among them if they are all three you have to justify why only prana or why only indra devata or why only jiva and when i ask you that question you have to give me tarka that you have used as to if you say prana then what about the indra para vakya 
you will pick up a prana paravakya then i'll ask you what about indra paravakya how have you reinterpreted that or what lakshana have you used to land from indra paravakya to prana if you say it is indra devata then i'll ask you what about jiva paravakya and prana paravakya in the earlier case also indra paravakya and jiva paravakya what about that how will you reinterpret that with lakshana to mean prana if you take indra devata then i'll ask you what about prana para and jiva para which lakshana have you used to land on indra devata there how did jiva become indra devata how did prana become indra devata if you say jiva para vakya then what about the other two prana and indra devata those vakyas how will you make them mean jiva and why you will have no answer then what would be the end result of your anya para anya para tatparya if you do tatparya nischaya anya para not brahma para anya para is brahmana anya para if it is different from brahma that is what is the shastra drushti then kim tat anya param katham tat anya param all these should be answered by you and you have no answers therefore what will be the end result i'll tell you says the sutra ka in the last sutra in this pada itself adhikarana also and the pada also jeeva mukhya pranalingan ne iti chenno upasatre vidyat ashritatvad ih tad yogat jeeva mukhya pranalingan ne iti chenno upasatre vidyat ashritatvad ih tad yogat so this siddhanti says jeeva मुख्य प्राण लिंगात न इति चेत यदि पूर्व पक्षी वेर टू आस दैट दिस इज पूर्व पक्षी जीव मुख्य प्राण लिंगात न न व्हाट जीव मुख्य प्राण लिंगात जीव परम मुख्य प्राण परम च इदम वाक्यम न तु ब्रह्म परम इति चेत बिकॉज जीव एंड मुख्य प्राण इंद्र इज आल्सो देयर इंद्र देवता बट पूर्व पक्षी इफ एट ऑल ही सेज जीव परम वाक्यम मुख्य प्राण परम इदम वाक्यम एतद वाक्यम व्हाई बिकॉज लिंग इज देयर सो जीव लिंगात जीव परम एतद वाक्यम मुख्य प्राण लिंगात मुख्य प्राण परम एतद वाक्यम therefore it is jeeva upasana or mukhy prana upasana mukhy prana because prana can be individual this prana is samashti prana that is the idea with mukhy prana or not prana apana vyana udana samana not one not, not that prana which is one of the five pranas pancha pranana madhye ekah prana satuna itatra then what it is the prana which is seen with five you know five uh, by five uh, what do you say by five factors or five kriyas based on what kriya it does it gets different names not that kind of a divided prana but samashti prana or the prana which is in all jeevas that prana devata if at all you want to call it as devata that prana devata mukhya prana and then it will be prana upasana indra is also there indra devata by extension we can bring in indra devata also so jeeva मुख्य प्राण लिंगा सिंस देर आर वाक्या विच आर लिंग टू शो यू दैट इट इज नॉट ब्रह्म पर एटलीस्ट वन ऑफ दिस इज नॉट ब्रह्म पर देन यू ड्रॉप दैट जीव पर वाक्य पूर्व पक्षी यू पिकअप मुख्य प्राण पर वाक्य एंड यू बाय दैट बिकम्स अ लिंग टू शो दैट इट इज नॉट ब्रह्म पर इट कैन नॉट बी कमिटेड टू रिविल टू थिंग्स एट द सेम टाइम सो वन वाक्य विल रिविल ओनली वन उपास्य देवता इधर इट इज जीव or brahma and since it is jiva it cannot be brahma that jiva para vakya cannot be brahma para says the purva pakshi the mukhya prana linga will show that that vakya which has that mukhya prana linga it is mukhya prana para not brahma para and then indra devata also indra deva devata para vakya is going to make indra devata as upasya but not brahma then those lingas will take away your brahma paratvam that you are claiming you the siddhanti therefore jiva mukhya prana linga na na brahma param etad vakyam iti chet na says the siddhanti says na this na is siddhanti is na and then he answers 
उपासा त्रैविध्यात वाई डेंट डू दि पदच्छेद सो जीव मुख्य प्राणलिंगा न इति चेत न उपासा त्रैविध्या आश्रितवा इह तद्योगात सो तद्योगात इज सिंगल वर्ड समासा सो उपासा त्रैविध्या न वाय बिकॉज युअर उपासना द वे यू आर टेलिंग मी से सिद्धांति प्रति पूर्व पक्षी दैट वन वाक्य बाय लिंगा इफ इट इज नोन टू बी जीव पर इट के नॉट बी ब्रह्म पर इफ इट इज प्राण पर इट के नॉट बी ब्रह्म पर इफ इट इज इंद्र पर इट के नॉट बी ब्रह्म पर आई हैव शोन यू एज टू वाई इट कैन बी ऑल दीज थ्री वाक्या बाय लक्षण बाय शास्त्र दृष्टि कैन बी ब्रह्म पर सो जीव पर वाक्य ऑल्सो कैन बी ब्रह्म पर आई एम नॉट सींग इट इज जीव पर एंड ब्रह्म पर आई एम सींग इट इज ब्रह्म पर ओनली मुख्य प्राण पर वाक्य दैट यू सी इज नॉट रियली मुख्य प्राण पर इट इज ब्रह्म पर एंड इंद्र देवता पर वाक्य दैट यू सी इज ऑल्सो नॉट इंद्र देवता पर इट इज ब्रह्म पर सो फॉर इन माई केस इट ऑल दीज वाक्या आई कैन शो एज बींग ब्रह्म पर बाय उपाधि भेद यू सी डिफरेंस इन नाम रूप मेन्शन बट द लिंग इज ब्रह्म लिंग लाइक अर्लियर यथो वा इमा भूता जायंते देन लेटर ऑलसो दिस आकाश एंड प्राण एल्स वेर ऑलसो इन छांदोग्य प्राण वर्ड हेज बीन यूज फॉर ब्रह्म We have shown this in the Pranadi Karana Sesi Siddhanti. So here also it means the same thing. Indra Devata also means the same thing. By Shastra Dhriti, he has that Upadesha as Pranosmi Pragnatma. Now in your case, use the use the same logic. What will happen is that your Vakyas or you take the entire section also. You are saying the entire section is either Jiva Upasana Para or Mukhya Pran Upasana Para or by extension Indra Devata Upasana Para. then how will you explain divisions and divisions if you can't explain then you will have to say be it with a pinch of salt or biting your tongue you will have to say that this particular upasana is jiva upasana mukhya prana upasana and indra devata upasana so upasa trividyad apate this is the dosha which will accrue to your analysis mimamsa That trividya upasana, prasajjeran, prasajjeran. In your analysis with your mimamsa, you have landed with this section, Kaushite ki Upanishad. That section, at least, if not the entire upasana, entire uh, if not the entire Upanishad, the section which is upasana para, that particular section in its entirety will be giving you three upasyas. Three vidyas. They you will have three types of upasanas in one upasana really, which is not possible. Therefore, that is one hetu. So upasa three vidya doshat. Upasa three vidya doshat. Upasa nam three vidyam prasajjeran. Saheva doshah tasmad doshat. What it cannot be. the way you analyze it has to be brahma param we will bring it back to brahma para and ashritatvat ashritatvat means pran prana shabdasya that prana shabda we can take by lakshana we can take to brahma the way we have done in pranadikarana here also we can do that we have shown you here with a different hetu shastra drushti shastra drushte he is the hetu there shastra drushtya can be seen as what as hetu hetau tritiya here especially strilinga strilinga generally you see in, uh, you see a lot you, you see a lot in tritiya as hetu so shastra drushti is the hetu shastra drushte he or shastra drushtya that can be the hetu or if not then you can say if it is a karana due to that vision is one thing or by that vision then we'll say hetu garbha visheshana इन एनी केस हेतु इज देर शास्त्र दृष्टि वामदेववत तस्मात कारण देन ड्यू टू दैट रीजन प्राण कैन मीन ब्रह्म 
ಆಶ್ರಿತತ್ವ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಶಬ್ದ ಇಸ್ ಆಶ್ರಿತ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಹೇತು ಆಶ್ರಿತತ್ವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದಟ್ ರೀಸನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಶೋನ್ ಯು ಹೌ ಇನ್ ಅದರ್ ಅಧಿಕರಣ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಹ ಅಪಿ ಸೊ ಇಹ ಇಹ ತದ್ಯೋಗಾತ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ತದ್ಯೋಗಾತ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಯೋಗ ತದ್ಯೋಗಾತ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಶೋನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಲಿಂಗಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಶೋನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೋಸ್ ಲಿಂಗಾಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗಾಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ಕಾರಣತ್ವ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಆರ್ ಆಕಾಶಲಿಂಗ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಆಸ್ ಅಹಮೇವ ಪ್ರಾಣ ದಟ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಯು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗಾತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಶೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಮನು ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ದ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮ ಭಾವ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಸರ್ಮಾ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮ ಭಾವ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ವ್ಯಾಪಕತ್ವ ವಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಜೀವ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ವಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಜೀವ ಹಿಯರ್ ಓ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಕಿಪ್ಪಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜೀವ ವಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಜೀವ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಯು ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಬೈ ಯು ನೋ ಬೈ ಆಶೀರ್ತತ್ವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೈ ಉಪಾಸ ತ್ರೈವಿಧ್ಯಾದ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ದೋಷ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರಿಫ್ ರಿಫ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಮೈ ಪಕ್ಷ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಲಿಂಗ ಯು ಆರ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಆಸ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬೈ ಆಶೀರ್ತತ್ವ ಹೇತು ವಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಜೀವ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜೀವ ಬಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೊ ಜೀವಸ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತ್ವ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಜೀವಸ್ಯ ದಟ್ ಅಹಂ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಬೈ ಇಂದ್ರ ದಟ್ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮ ಭಾವ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಲೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗಾತ್ಮ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಅಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಜೀವಸ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತ್ವಾತ್ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಶಬ್ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ಆಶ್ರಿತತ್ವ ಇಹ ಅಪಿ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೀಡ್ ಅನ್ ಅಪಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಹ ಯು ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಹ ಇಹ ಅಪಿ ತದ್ಯೋಗಾತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಯೋಗಾತ್ ಏಕಮೇವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಮತ್ರ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ದಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೇ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಈಸ್ ಉಪಾಸ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐಕ್ಯ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಕಾನ್ ಸಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ವೆನ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಏವ ಅಹಂ ಅಸ್ಮಿ ಅಜರ ಅಮರ ಅಮೃತ ಇತ್ಯಾದಿ ಅನಂತ ಆನಂದ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಟು ಆಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಸತ್ವ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಚಿತ್ವ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಅನಂತತ್ವ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಜಗತ್ ಕಾರಣತ್ವ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಅಸ್ತಿತ್ವ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲಿಂಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡನ್ ವೆರಿ ರೇರ್ಲಿ that astitva hetu is used but to only to show that that satta belongs to brahma and advaitin uses it but in upasana etc that is not going to be used lakshana sachidananda brahma so wherever satta is there that belongs to brahma so everything can be reinterpreted as brahma by an advaitin in its true sense but this is not agreeable to the sabha in in a debate or anything madhyastha we also not agree so it is not done in that manner but i am just showing you that it is possible to be done for nadvaitin anything can be taken and interpreted as brahma however in upasana phala is there in neya neya the phala is drishta phala it is not adrishta phala here you need adrishta so in adrishta you cannot you know interpret with your jnana and stop there you have to use it as upasana here this upasana is possible with nama roopa while having brahma buddhi which is the goal and adrushta as well as drushta phala both will be there this is the siddhantis perspective so since adrushta is also ishta here we
So we have to stop here in these sections which are Upasana para. Although they reveal the Brahma as the Parabrahma, Aikya is not clear here. It is not the core teaching. It is indirect through Upasana. So Upasana should be there on Prana, on Indra Devata or in Udgita. All these, if at all it is mentioned, you do the Upasana that way, but keep the Parabrahma Buddhi is the teaching in the Upasana. So Vaktaram Vidyat, Iti Jeeva Lingat. What has been said? Vaktaram Vidyat, Vijani hi, Mamev Vijani and then Vaktaram Vidyat. One who is speaking, know this speaker. Who is that speaker? It is like Shrotasya Shrota. Uh, not Shrotasya, uh, it's uh, Shrotuhu. Like Trijanta. Shrotuhu Shrota. Mantuhu Manta. So, or you take, you know, Indriyas also, then it is that which makes the Shrotrendriya work, Shravana possible, which makes Shravana possible. Similarly, it makes the tongue speak. What is that? It is the tongue of the tongue. It is the Vakta of the Vakta. The real Sad Brahma, Chid Brahma, which makes the tongue come about alive and become sentient so that it can do its own karya and that is an example. It's an upalakshana extended to everything. Each and everything is going on in this prapancha so meticulously at the vyashti and samashti level in keeping with each and every jiva's prarabdha karma because there is one sentient Ishwara. Parabrahma, who is a Vyapaka Tattva, who is the Vyapaka Tattva, not a. So, who is, a, who is the Vyapaka Tattva, pervading and manifesting as these. So, that Vaktaram Vidyat, may you know, or that kind of a Vaktara, that kind of Vakta should be known, Vidyat, should be known. Iti Jeeva Lingat. We will say this Vakta is not really individualized. But Pura Pakshi says Vaktaram Vidyat is an individual Jeeva Linga. Ite Jeeva Lingat. Idam Shariram Parigriya Uttapayati. Yeah, so yesterday we ha I had a confusion as to, you know, there's a typo somewhere. So Uttapayati is right. There was another uh, reading there online somewhere. So Vaktaram Vidyat Iti Jeeva Linga says the Pura Pakshi. Idam Shariram Parigriya Uttapayati. Prana takes up this Sharira and makes it. Sentient. Here we saw Vaktaram Vidya Titi Jeeva Linga. So it is very clear as you know the speaker. Nobody will say the speaker is Brahma. Speaker is an individual. So Jeeva Linga is there from the Puro Pakshi's perspective. But we will say Vakta of the Vakta. Really it is that Vakta of the Vakta which is meant here. How so? Because you put together other statements also and then it will all come together. <coughs> what about Idam Shariram Parigriya? This we saw yesterday as how this can be. Brahma has to, Anena Jeevena, Atmana Anu, Pravishya, elsewhere also it is there. And in this section also, all these will come together when you look at, you know, Shadling analysis of the Upanishad itself, proper or section proper also, you will get the conclusion that Tatpare Vishya is Parabrahma as Upasya Devata here. But Purva Pakshi says, Idam Shariram Parigriya, Prana takes this Sharira, Bukhya Prana. And therefore what? It is not Brahma Para. So, idam sharinam parigriya uthapayati iti mukhya prana linga acha. Therefore, it is not brahma para, it is mukhya prana para. Now, Siddhanti says, okay, one vakya you are saying, jiva para, another vakya mukhya prana linga. Pura bhakshi says, okay, uvhaya param, tar uvhaya param, it is. Jeeva Upasana as well as Mukhya Prana Upasana. But what I intend to say it is not Brahma Para. Na Brahma Para Meva Iti. Definitely not Brahma Para Vakya. Jeeva Para or Mukhya Prana Para or both. But definitely not Brahma Para Iti Chet. Na Siddhanti says no. Not possible. Kutaha. Upasa Trividyad. 
because of three types of upasana in one section this is what will be the dosha that will accrue to your mimamsa dev jiva mukya prana brahma upasana ani trini prasajjiran one single section would mean to be talking about jiva upasana mukya prana upasana and brahma upasana so three trini upasana ani in one section unheard of no mimamsaka worth is salt will do this kind of an analysis so your analysis can't stand scrutiny by anyone any astika nachata dishtam it is not desirable for you also it should not be you cannot say that with these doshas i am okay you cannot be because if one of these falls apart then we'll trust your entire darshana whoever you are we'll trust we will uh, question your not trust we'll question your entire darshana because if one analysis is on shaky ground and you say i am okay with it then every analysis that you have done will be questioned and will be subject to analysis because it will all be on shaky ground nachata dishtam tvaya api na ishtam then siddhanti further says mahameva prano asmi tyuktva ante upasamharati go to the end of the section do the shuddling analysis स एष प्राण एव प्रज्ञात्मा इनफैक्ट इनिशियल ऑल्सो इट हैज बीन सेड उपसंहार यस बट उपक्रम ऑल्सो हैज प्रज्ञात्मा प्राणोस्मी प्रज्ञात्मा देन एंड्स विथ स एष प्राण एव प्रज्ञात्मा दैट प्राण इज प्रज्ञात्मा एंड आई एम दैट मामेव विजानी ही ऑल दीज आर देयर मामेव विजानी ही प्राणोस्मी प्रज्ञात्मा देन स एष प्राण एव प्रज्ञात्मा प्रज्ञात्मा इज इन सामानाधिकरण With maam, aham, asmi, thing samanadikarnam is there, pranha. So all these and sa esha, sa is that, that I am. So if you see tattvamasi, instead of saying tattvamasi, it is like aham brahma asmi also. Tad tad aham asmi, sa aham asmi, sa esha prana aham asmi, pragnyatma aham asmi. All these are in samanadikarnam. एवं उपक्रम उपसंहाराभ्याम इफ यू लुक एट मामेव प्राणोस्मि सएश प्राण ऑल दिस इन सामानादिकरण्यम तात्पर्य विषय इज वेरी मच दैट नथिंग अदर देन दिस सो एवं उपक्रम उपसंहाराभ्याम वाक्य इक वाक्यत्वावगमात वाक्य एक वाक्यता आप वाक्य एक वाक्यत्व सो दिस वाक्य हैज एक वाक्यत्व What is this vakya? Eka vakya to. First, what is vakya? First, this vakya. What is this vakya? And what is this eka vakya to or eka vakya ta? Avagamat because of such understanding, there is an understanding when you analyze in this manner. Evam through what should you analyze? Upakrama and upasamhara. You take the opening statement, the introductory statement, and you go to the concluding statement. You see whatever is common there, that is the tatpare vishaya. Then other lingas are there; they will be repeated, abhyasa ityadi. But you just take these two lingas, say the siddhanti, and tell me how do you justify jiva parata, mukhya prana parata, or indra devata parata? Even if we discount the trividya, trividya. Uh, possibility trividyam so there is a possibility uh, not a possibility definite there will be definitely there will be three upasanas that you are claiming all together which is a dosha so even if we discount that keep it aside still if you analyze and tell me how upakrama and upasamhara will be jiva upasana or mukhya prana upasana or indra devata upasana one of them also you cannot justify let alone go with your dosha and justify all three <laughs> then what is this vakya <clears throat> so you know vakyas vakya lakshana of vakya is different for different darshanikas darshanikas are you know for vyakaranas also in fact vyakaranas have their own sthotavada also they have their own uh, close to uh, adwaita but not completely 
But Spota Vada is their own darshana, uh, which is not discussed much in, it is not counted in Shad Darshan, etc. But it is also there. There is Spota Vada. After Pani, the Yakhyanakaras uh, later developed the philosophy around it. Spota Vada. How does the understanding take place? How does the final understanding of any Shabda and Vakya takes place? What is this uh, Vakya Jnana? And this is important for, a, uh, for all Darshanikas. So it is Upakaraka, not Spotavada, but Vyakrana is Upakaraka, Tarka is Upakaraka. So these two are considered as Upakaraka, Vyakrana, although it has its own Darshana or philosophy or Spotavada, own Vada as to what is this understanding and that understanding, whether you call it Shabda Brahma Ityadi, later you know, uh, you hear these words Shabda Brahma. So the, all this comes from Spotavada, which developed from Vyakrana. Pahini Sutra doesn't have it, Mahabhashya does not have it, but then there may be sections which can be interpreted as having Spota as its Tatpare, meaning how does the understanding take place in the mind of anyone. So the Spota Vada says there is a Spota and whatever that Spota is technical. So suddenly there is some kind of a revelation, something takes place. So they have a particular definition for Vakya, Vayakaranas themselves have it, let alone uh, Spotavada, you don't have to, you know, go till that. This is just an aside. But what is the understanding of Tattvamasi that Advaitin claims or somebody else claims or a Puro Mimamsaka says when I hear a Vakya in Shruti, whether it is in Karma Kanda or Upasana Kanda, when I hear the Veda Vakya, which is Pramana, then how does the understanding take place? And for that understanding to be absolutely correct, what should be my analysis of that section of that Vakya and in that section, how does it connect with other sections? Some other Vakya in the same section or other sections? Phala elsewhere, how does it connect? All these I have to do and Puro Vimamsakas have set a good foundation for Uttara Vimamsakas to follow. So we will have the same definition of Vakya as the Puro Vimamsaka. Vayakarana will have one definition whether or not we agree. Tarkika will have some definition of how the understanding takes place. He will bring about a definition for something based on that as to how the understanding takes place. If we focus on that, then we will look at what is Vakya. In Vyakrana, it is Eka Thing Vakyam. Eka Thing, Thing is a Pratyaya, but Thing by, ek, in Eka Thing Vakyam, by Lakshana Thing means Thinganta Pada. So Vyakrana Eka Thing Vakyam. Eka Thing Vakyam. One Vakya is that which has one verb. That's what it means. There should be one verb. That is why when we do uh, Anvaya of any sentence, if we don't have any verb, we supply a verb. Asti bhavati vartate, one of these will supply. Based on the vacha, uh, vachana, of course. If they, it is dual, we will say bhavataha. If there is plural, we will say bhavantaha. So, asti, asdhatu, bhudhatu or vridhatu will add one of these, decline that and supply the verb. So that it is a vakya which can be understood. Of course, by sutras there can be krutya pratyas which are replacement for, uh, you know, for things. So, thing or thing equivalent should be there in the sentence. In your buddhi, one thing should be there. Finally, some kriya should be there. That's what it means. In any vivaksha, some kriya is intended. So, eka thing vakyam. But what is padam? And pada is what? Pada is a word, declined word. Either a noun or a verb. So, when you say eka thing vakyam, gachati is a sentence. But if you take strictly speaking, gachati, bhavati is a sentence. Then akasha can be there, kaha bhavati, kim bhavati, samanya napunsakam, kim bhavati. And if you have to be very, uh, you know, technically correct, we will say, kim gachati. Because, you know, samanya napunsakam, even somebody has it at, is at the door on the other side, knocks, we are not, we don't know who it is there. Generally in English we say he etc. Right? 
uh, we don't say she generally in usage it has been he masculine as used so samanya napunsakam we can ask him asti but it has mis it can be misconstrued based on the way the language has developed and the way the spoken language is made easy for others like dual is dropped some cases are not taught some letters are dropped i have heard nyakara because it appears like dakara people have dropped it in modern teaching ridiculous but then that's how it is to make life simpler but then you compromise the language itself by that nonetheless too much of a side what i meant, meant to say is that suptingantam padam subantam is padam tingantam is padam so what has sup suffix in the end that is a pada and what has ting suffix in the end is a pada so that's a verb the the former is a noun and these if if there is at least one thing on the pada that will become a vakya not at least so there should be one thing on the pada that is a vakya so here vakya then eka vakyata has been mentioned in nyaya what is vakya pada samuha vakyam if there are group of words if there are group of padas not words i'll say group of padas words but then padas we'll stick to pada because we are looking at what is pada what is vakya then we'll land on eka vakya to eka vakya to so nyaya says that you don't need to say gachati so ramaha vanam gachati is a good sentence for vyakarana because gachati is there eka thing vakyam nayayika says that for some understanding to take place i don't need thing anta pada he claims that pada samuha vakyam so if there are two words whether there are two nouns one noun and a verb or whatever combination this is there should be at least a group of words so there should be multiple words that's all for nyana to take place and a word will also give me some kind of understanding pada carries some meaning so he says what is padam shaktam padam pada has the capacity to reveal something now this revelation of artha is agreeable to puro mimamsa also puro mimamsa is pada and padartha have the word and meaning have nitya sambandha and this is the basis by which he finally claim that vedas are apurushya apurushya they are anadi they are nitya therefore anadi and they are apurushya not created by even ishwara let alone any human being but not even the supreme purusha of sankhyas not even by ishwara then who created it it was never created it has always been there veda is apurushya nitya the pada padartha sambandha is nitya so pada has shakti to reveal reveal the meaning when you hear the word any word then it gives some meaning so ghataha gauhu you hear some meaning comes to the mind that meaning which comes to the mind is because it triggers a memory and comes to mind because the word and meaning pada and padartha have nitya sambandha that is why the same meaning comes to mind we are we are not talking about doshas doshas are can do anything but then we are talking about a dosha rahita person where pada heard reveals some meaning now that meaning is blocked due to some dosha and some other thing comes to mind that's a different story we are not talking about the adhyasa ityadi we are talking about the nitya sambandha the word will reveal the meaning now the nayayika says shaktam padam the pada reveals the meaning and puro mimamsaka says that the shakti to reveal the meaning which is vachyartha what literally it means that is there because by vyakrana you know prakriti pratyaya will lead to some meaning pratyaya is in some meaning prakriti is in some meaning this is all for someone who knows the language some language you know the grammar you know in that language here obviously it is sanskrit there is no other language really no other language for a vaidika there is no other language it is only sanskrit 
which is samyak krutam which is the language itself has been there it is not a uh, therefore a grammar of uh, sanskrit vyakarana is not a prescriptive vyakarana it does not give you rules to form words it explains the words which are existent so the words are nitya pada is nitya pada padartha sambandha is nitya like the mimamsaka says vyakarana will say the akshara also is like that but the uh, from vyakarana's perspective is that the suktingvantam padam that uh, the pada carries some meaning by prakriti and pratyaya combination the mimamsaka says since that knowledge is there and there is a nitya sambandha between pada and padartha it will reveal some meaning in its garbha the pada has the meaning embedded that will be revealed if that vachartha the literal meaning of the word is not meant in the veda vakya when we are analyzing the padas it doesn't fit in then other meaning also it can reveal it has shakti to reveal something else by connection by sambandha that sambandha through the sambandha to reveal a meaning the capacity to reveal the meaning is called as lakshana which we have seen multiple times as to what is lakshana it is known to everyone so that lakshana is also one capacity of the word to reveal the meaning which we'll use when vachartha makes no sense agreeable to uttara mimamsaka vedantin also now nayayika says pada samuha vakyam shaktam padam this pada samuha so he says that you know ramaha lakshmana also will become a sentence as per nayayika now looking at this background purva mimamsaka when he analyzes and uttara mimamsaka follows that mimamsa what is this eka vakyata which is talked about here eka vakyata eka vakyatva or eka vakatva so the ekartha pratipadakatvam eka vakyatvam that multiple vakyas convey some meaning so anyway i have jumped the gun i just wanted to finish the uh, the pada vakya so the uh, i just want to close that as to pada samuha will reveal some meaning that is the vakyartha which is called as uh, the shabda bodha by the mimamsaka <coughs> both of both types purva and uttara what is meant by shabda bodha is not the shabda shabda sambandhi bodha shabda bodha tatha na so the vakya bodha the entire the meaning of the entire vakya is called as shabda bodha so when you hear tat some meaning comes to mind because pada has the capacity to reveal the meaning now just by the pada you will get the vachyartha if the pada means the vachyartha or lakshartha for that you need the entire vakya and entire vakya means one thing one the pada has to be there in tattvamasi vakya asi pada is there so when you hear the asi pada before here in the asi pada tat gave you some meaning which is vachyartha tat whatever is there it is a sarvanama so whatever went by you will take that meaning that is sad brahma the jagat karana brahma ishvara is meant by tat then tom you hear you know that oh that ishvara then you then in there you can have until you get the verb you won't know the meaning as to what it means it is like saying uh, rama you that that person you it means nothing in the mimamsa puro mimamsa ka says and uttar mimamsa ka also says it means nothing unless you tell me what is the word once one hears asi then o oh, tattvam asi tat is brahma aham this this tam is shweta ketu then asi has been said you are you are and then tat and tam are in samadharika because asi will bring them together tat is not second case it is first case so both of them will come about to be in samanadikaranam and what is this samanadikaranam now how is it possible by vachyartha it is impossible because shweta ketu is son of someone brother of someone not married so not husband but then in that just that analysis he is a shishya he is a human being he is an individual he is not his father definitely let alone father of everyone jagat karana so jagat of pita he isn't 
then how will this sentence make sense? So you have to take Lakshana. Then this capacity to reveal meaning by Lakshana is taken by Pada. By Tatpada also Tampada and by Lakshana, Bhagatyaga Lakshana, Jadajal Lakshana will take the meaning and make sense out of the sentence Tattvamasi. Now if there is a similar sentence which gives this meaning, then there will be Ekavakyata. That is Ekavakyata, meaning the Shabda Buddha is same in two sentences. When the Shabda Buddha is same in two sentences, that will lead to Ekavakyatvam or Ekavakyata between those two sentences. So, Ekartha Pratipadakatvena Ekavakyatvam. Here, the sentence is Mameva Vijanihi. So, coming back to the context how it applies is Mameva Vijanihi. Pranu Asmi Prajnatma Sayesha Pranayo Prajnatma The Vakya Bodha, the Shabda Bodha that takes place, the Vakya Jnana, Shabda Bodha that takes place is one and the same. Now this Ekavakyata is mentioned. Now there are two types of Ekavakyata also. So now you have to say Vakya Ekavakyatvam Kim. We have seen Vakyam Kim, Ekavakyatvam Kim. Now Vakya Ekavakyatvam Kim. This is contrasted against Pada Ekavakyatvam. So there is something called as Pada Ekavakyatvam and there is Vakya Ekavakyatvam. So Pada Ekavakyatvam as described by the Mimam Sakai. Vidhi vidhi vidhina saha aneka vakyana vidheyasya stutyarthvena stutyarthvena lakshanaya padasthaniyatvam. When stuti is seen, you know, when there, generally when stuti is done, then with a vidhi, in the vidhi, something unknown is known. From Vedas, you know something which is unknown through vidhi seen a bit in uh, Artha Sangra. So there, the Vidheya, with the Vidhi, what is the Vidheya? If you look at what is the Vidheya, this Stuti is being done. And through that, Artha Vada, Stuti, Ityadi, between many Vakyas, Aneka Vakyanam, Vidhina Saha, Vidheya Sya, Stutyartena. As the object of Suti there, Lakshana has to be done of that Pada and then the Padasthaniyatvam, through that you will have Ekavakyata. This Pada has to be reinterpreted because in Stuti it can have a different meaning and thereby this Vidheya is praised through this and therefore there is Ekavakyata, this Pada will have a different meaning and through that you will get a same sense across sentences. That is Pada Eka Vakyata. Pada Eka Vakyata. Vakya Eka Vakyata is what we saw already saw as Aneka Vakyanam Eka Vakyatvam. All Vakyas give the same Shabda Bodha. That is Vakya Eka Vakyata. Here you have that kind of a thing. There is no Stuti. Prana is not praised. Indra Devata is not praised. Prajnatma is not some entity to be praised per se. So, Sayesha Pranayo Prajnatma tells you that which is being talked about in the context that Prana is Prajnatma, has to be Brahma. So, the meaning is the teaching of Brahma, Upasya is Brahma. Prano Asmi, that Prana I am. Literally, they can't be in Samanadi Karanyam. And it is not a Stuti also. So, it is not Pada Ekavakyata. Ekavakyata is still there. Because whatever meaning prana is prajnatma and that prana I am, they have the same sense. Why? Because both will end up meaning Brahma. Mameva Vijanihi, what kind of me? That me who is not Indra Devata, but equated with prana ityadi. So you look at the sections and analyze the vakyas, you will get eka vakyata, and that eka vakyata is vakya eka vakyata. So vakya eka vakyatva vagamat evam upakrama upasamhara abhyam. The sentences which are at the beginning and the end of the section, they have vakya eka vakyatva. And since there is an understanding of vakya eka vakyatvam between the introduction and conclusion, it is Brahmapara. The section itself is Brahmapara. Not only the vakyas, the entire section is Brahmapara. There is only one upasya parabrahma 
which is being discussed through and through the section. Kincha Anyatra Brahma Linga Vashat. Further what? This Brahma Linga we have, we have shown you in the earlier sutras and we will keep on showing you, says the Sutra Kara. So Kincha Anyatra. The Vritti says that this is the mind of the Sutra Kara. Kincha Anyatra Brahma Linga Vashat. Prana Shabdasya Brahmani Vritte He Ashritatvad. When you say Prana, what Vritti takes place in this section? And in the earlier section, what we have shown, the same vritti takes place here also. Prano asmi. When you say pra, when you hear pranaha in that as, with the asmi in that vakya prana shabda se kortha. Mukhya prana or this prana who is one among the five. Pancha prana gata prana. Uta mukhya prana. Uta brahma parabrahma. If you analyze that, then prana shabdasya brahmani vrittehe ashrita twal. When prana shabda understanding takes place in the sentence, which sentence? This sentence, prana asmi, prana eva prajnatma, and this vritti is similar to what we have shown you earlier. The understanding that takes place, jnana vritti, same as what we have shown you in another section. Ashrita twal, brahmalinga vashat. Because brahmalinga is there. How? Anandaha, Ajaraha, these words have been shown. So those will be Brahmalinga and Prana will bring about understanding of Brahma. Just like it has been shown elsewhere in Prana Adhikarana. Kincha Anyatra Brahmalinga Vashat, Prana Shabda Se Brahmani Vritte Ashri Tattvat, Iha Pitad Yogat, Brahmalinga Se Yogat and therefore Brahmalinga Se Yogat Prana Shabda Se Brahmani Vritte Ashri Tattvat. Shita Tamatvadi Asadharana Brahmalinga Yoga and what has been shown earlier in the opening itself. Shita Tama Upadesha is there. Manushyana Shita Tama Ha. Manushyabhya. For Manushyas whatever is the best that is the Upadesha and that Upadesha is not Prana Upadesha. Prana Upasana will not give you the best. It can give you something superior not the best. Indra Upasana can give you something superior not the best. Jiva Upasana definitely nowhere close to superior, let alone the best. So, Hitatama Tvadya Sadharana Brahma Linga Yoga, Asadharana Brahma Linga, Hitatama is Brahma. Hitatama has to be Moksha. Hitatama is, is Shreyas, Parama Shreyas. It cannot be something in between, it cannot definitely be something which will lead to Adhogati or Samsaranam continuing. It cannot be Swarga Gati or Brahma Loka Gati from which there will be return. Punaravrati. It has to be Hitatama has to be finally either Krama Mukti or Jeevan Mukti. Basically Mukti, Moksha. So Hitatama Twadi Asadharana Brahma Linga and that Asadharana there is only one Mukta Tattva. Nitya Mukta Tattva is only Brahma. So, Hitatama has to be Asadharana Linga of Brahma. And Hitatama Twadi, Adipadena Ananda Ityadi. That Ananda has to be, it is not qualified. That Ananda will be like Brahmi Vriddhav. Brahma without any limitations will mean limitless. Why does Brahma mean limitless? Because Brahmi Vriddhav, what kind of Vriddhi? There is no limitation of Vriddhi. How big? It is big. How big? No limitation is there. Puja Swamiji used to say, you know, is, is it mosquito big or elephant big or mountain big? So bigness, see, it's a big mountain, big is a is an adjective to the mountain. But when big itself is a substantive, how big you are asking? Oh, is it the mosquito size big or is it a mountain size big? Is it a hillock size big? Is it your table size big? Is it your size big? Elephant size big? How big? Is it uh, Akashavat, Mat? That Vriddhi, how... How Vridha is it? How big is it? So Brihi Vridha, that Brahma with Manin Pratya will end up meaning limitless because there is no qualifier to limit it. Therefore limitless, infinite, Purna Brahma. That Brahma meaning will apply here as well. Why? Because Hita Tamatvam, how, how, the best Hita, Asadana Brahma Linga. 
Adipadena Ananda, which is mentioned, which is also not qualified. What Ananda? Not uh, with the Bhedas of Priyamoda, Pramoda. Then what is this Ananda? It is limitless Ananda. Wherever the qualification is not there, it will become a Brahmalinga. Satta, Spurti, all these are Brahmalingas really. But anyway, Ananda is definitely Brahmalinga. By Lakshana Vakya is Satchid Ananda Brahma. So Ananda also, Ajaraha, Ajara will be Brahma. Devatas are called as Ajara by Stuti, they are not really Ajara. Amara also is Stuti, not Amara. We know that they have an end. The Upadhi may continue with a different Jiva being identified there. Across Kalpas. But it is not the same Jiva is continuing. It is not a set of Jivas also. Hiranyagarbha association can be for Hiranyagarbha Upasakas many at one time also it may be there. It may be possible. You identify why yogis can do it. Yogis exhaust their prarabdha. In Yoga Shastra there are Siddhis given whereby if one can get that, one can exhaust the prarabdha or have bhoga through multiple shariras. One can associate with multiple shariras. At the end of uh, Tarka Sangra, we had seen there was a mention of this. Tarkika talks about this. So there is an association with multiple shariras for bhoga and exhausting prarabdha also. Through multiple shariras, in, a less, in less time, one can exhaust more prarabdha. So all these are possible. Similarly, the identification with Upadhi may be possible for multiple Jivas, especially with Hiranyagarbha, for Upasakas and Ananda, there the Ananda Bhoga is there, not the Dukkha Bhoga of other Jivas. Of all Jivas, if you want Ananda simultaneously, then you do Hiranyagarbha Upasana Ityadi, may be prescribed there in the Shastra. However, it will come to an end because individual Jivas will remain individual even then, during bhoga and definitely after the phala exhaust, because the upasana cannot give limitless phala. Maybe this fellow has done upasana for three janmas also. Three janmas can give you a long, long association with hiranyagarbha, sukha. But finally again, or your sanchita will be there, out of which prarabdha will be carved out. And again, samsaranam. So that cannot be hitatama. That cannot be ananda, which is asadharana linga of brahma. So brahma linga... Yoga, Hitatamatvasya, Anandasya, Asadharana Brahmalinga Yoga. It can mean only Brahma. Therefore, Brahmana Eva Ayam Upadesha Iti Sarvam Atishovanam. Therefore, this teaching in this Upasya being Brahma is absolutely perfect. It cannot be anything else. In fact, we have shown you that it is impossible that these lingas will apply to anything other than Brahma. And this is the conviction. In Jnana also, Jnana Moksha, Aikyena Moksha, Brahmana Sa, Mama Aikyena Moksha, this should be at that level of conviction that one should be able to say otherwise impossible. Otherwise impossible. Anything other should be impossible. If you show that, then Parishesha Nyayat. This is the only way out. There is nothing else. One can go about and try everything, analyze everything, even you know walk the paths of all Darshanikas, but finally you have to come to Advaita as the only means to moksha. And also everything will make sense only in this manner. Karma Kanda, Upasana Kanda, Moksha Kanda, Jnana Kanda, that is. All of these will make sense only if I am Brahma. No other way will everything make sense. Some part somewhere may make sense. You will have to force interpretation elsewhere. But this should be the conviction. And therefore, ayam eva upadesha iti sarvam atishovanam. All this is in the sutras. You look at it this way. This, the sutras are perfect. Says the vritti. Iti Shri Brahma Sutra Vrutta Brahma Tattva Prakashikayam Pratham Adhyasa Pratham Padha. So this is the first Pada of first chapter in Brahma Tattva Prakashika which is the name for the Brahma Sutra Vrutti by Bhagavan Sadashiv Brahmendra. So in, in this Brahma Sutra Vrutti which is 
in samanadi krana brahma tattva prakashika iti so this is the first pada we look at the second pada which is continuation of samanvaya adhyaya and it will start with the the spashta brahma linga vakyas have been seen seen now aspashta brahma linga vakyas will be seen how they mean they how they have some samanvaya in tatparya in brahma we'll see that in the next part sorry i took a little longer because uh, wanted to talk about something which i may not get the occasion to talk about this this is a good time to discuss the vyakranas uh, vakya etc with this vakya ek vakya tha and overall as to what is sarvam ati shobhanam um tat sat um amna yanti ka samsiddham adi madhyanta varjitam ananda ghanam apurnam at jyoti rupasmahe namaste namaste thank you namaste namaste